Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to be walking you through all the tips and tricks I have to help reduce your ping in Fortnite Chapter 4. Now, the reason I chose to make this video today, it should be pretty easy for you guys to guess why. It is all because of the recent server change. I'll explain more about it later, you know, we'll get into the nitty gritty of it. But for a quick little synopsis, competitive Fortnite servers on both regions are being moved to Texas. All of NA is being combined. Therefore, because like 80% of the NA player base is going to have way worse ping, including myself, I'm literally gonna be on 60. I decided to make a guide to help improve your ping so when the server change does come in Chapter 4 Season 2, our games won't feel as bad as they otherwise would have. Rest in peace my zero ping. So yeah, make sure to drop a like down below if this video helps you out. Also be sure to subscribe, use code Jerrion and not code it's Jerrion. And without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so before we get into the real tips and tricks, I think it's only fair that I fully explain the new server change. Basically, what Epic did is they decided that instead of keeping NA East and NA West separate, they're gonna combine all of NA into one region and host tournaments on that. What this means is that rather than NA East having their tournaments run on the Virginia server, as well as NA West having their tournaments run on the California server, Epic is putting an extra server in Texas, and that is what is going to host all the tournaments for this new giant region. It's kind of like how EU works right now. Be aware though that Arena and Creative are not gonna change. If you play any East right now, you'll still be able to get zero ping or low ping on your local server. It's just that in tournaments, stuff like Cash Cuffs, FNCS, and late game tournaments, starting in Chapter 4 Season 2, those are all going to be run on the Texas server. And while yes guys, I could just sit here and make like a 10 minute rant video on why I think it's an awful idea, there's gonna be issues with time zones, with just 80% of the player base having worse ping, even with the fact that all of Canada is pretty much screwed since Texas is at the bottom of the US. But let's be real, me complaining is not going to do a thing. Epic obviously does not care, so rather than me being bitter, I might as well try and help all of you guys improve your ping now, so like I said, when the servers do change, it won't be too terrible. <laughs> So what my first tip is, is it's something that I have mentioned in my past ping optimization videos. It's not necessarily like a Windows trick or anything, I'm gonna have all those settings later on. It is more of a general tip in that starting next season, you desperately need to be on a wired connection. Usually, even though I would not agree with it, you could kind of get away with playing on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, by the way, is playing wirelessly. Wired means you're connected with an Ethernet. And why you could get away with it is because if you were close to the servers, playing on Wi-Fi really was not that bad. The only time it would drastically change is if you had bad internet. However, with the competitive Fortnite servers changing to Texas, and with the fact that most of the United States lives on the coast, we are all going to have way worse ping than when the servers were in Virginia and California. I'm talking plus 40 ping for me. Therefore, unlike before, where a 5 to 10 ping difference really did not matter because, like in my case, I would still be less than 10 ping, I am now gonna be on 50 to 60, and a 10 ping difference is huge. Wired connection and ethernet is a game changer. So yeah guys, that is tip number one to use a wired connection. It actually leads to kind of all of our tips because the only way you can optimize your internet is with an ethernet. But for a lot of you guys watching, I know that actually getting a wired connection, not just having an ethernet, but actually being able to plug that ethernet into your PC and getting the best stable connection, it is not that easy. Your ethernet may not be long enough, your setup may be in a completely different room from your router, you may not even have known what a wired connection was. All of those reasons are why my second tip even though it is kind of two tips in one, are to either use a power line adapter or a mocha adapter if you physically cannot get an ethernet into your PC or console. OG viewers of my channel have probably heard me mention power line adapters and mocha adapters so many freaking times. I'm like a broken record just repeating things. But no joke guys, these things are so much better than playing on Wi-Fi or a wireless connection. And even though they do cost money, I'm telling you, they are worth it. They can get you almost as good as being directly plugged into your router. Oh, and actually, because I have talked about these things before, and I've tried to like explain them using different pictures, showing different diagrams, I've gotten a lot of comments and just people telling me on Twitter that it would be more helpful if I showed it IRL. So, just for the one time, because these new Texas servers are going to destroy us all, I am about to show you IRL how to improve your ping. 
All right, so we're going to start off with power line adapters. I literally have one right here and why they are so freaking useful. Now try to remember guys that the only reason you would ever use a power line adapter or a mocha adapter, which we'll look at next, is because your setup is not near your router. Like you guys know my setup, I am literally directly next to my router and that means I can get the best possible connection, which is just taking an ethernet cord. Oh, that is not an ethernet cord. This is an ethernet cord though. Taking an ethernet cord, plugging it into your router, and then from your router into your PC. But if you're like my brother and your room is upstairs, it's nowhere near your router, and you also are not able to run like a 90 foot ethernet through your house, your mom's not gonna like that. You're gonna have to use either Powerline or Mocha adapters, and I'm gonna show you how to set them up. So beginning with this thing, which I showed before, this is a Netgear Powerline adapter. Not sponsored, by the way, this is just the one my brother has. This little box will actually help you get Ethernet. You will get a secure and way better connection than Wi-Fi onto your setup, even if you're not next to your router. We're gonna have to go to my brother's room for this. And all you need are two of these things. You'll also need two Ethernet cords. A lot of the time, Ethernet cords come with the actual Powerline adapters. I'm pretty sure most of these are sold in, like, groups of two, but all you do is you stick the actual power line adapter into a power outlet. Ugh. So you plug it into your wall, it's through electricity. You then take your ethernet cord and you plug one end into this, ugh, the power line adapter like I just did, as well as the other end into your router. That's my Verizon router. Plug it into the back just like you would a normal ethernet cord. And then what you're gonna do, which if you can see, I'm in my brother's room. <laughs> he doesn't know I'm in here. But you're gonna take the other power line adapter you have, you can see, this is the other one, as well as the other ethernet cord. Oh, you will need to, like I said before, but they do come in packs of two. Holy voice crack. Ethernet into the power line adapter. You're gonna go to your setup. So this is my brother's setup, which my dad also uses for his office. You're gonna plug this power line adapter right next to your setup. Ugh, into the wall, and then you're gonna take the ethernet that's plugged into it. Remember, this is my brother's room. You're gonna run that ethernet into your PC, just like that, and you will get a pretty decent wired connection. It's not as good as a mocha adapter or obviously regular ethernet, but hey, it will do. And as I tried to say before, oh my, what is this lighting? Ah, I'm so white. This solution is way, way better than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is gonna be the worst. It's gonna get you by far the worst ping. And you know what's actually kind of funny? I just realized that last summer, an electrician installed an actual ethernet into my brother's room himself. So now he has an actual normal ethernet. He doesn't even need the power line adapters. Meanwhile, I had to move my setup next to the router because my parents wouldn't do that for me. Like really? Come on, man. Onto the other and actually the better way to lower your ping, at least when you compare it to the power line adapters we just looked at. We're gonna be talking about this bad boy, which is a Mocha adapter. Mocha adapters work kind of similar to power line adapters, except instead of transmitting data through electricity, Mocha adapters actually transmit data through your coaxes. So you guys know those weird cables that go into your TV? They're kind of like a weird one with a spike on the end that I'm pretty sure most people have. Pretty much every house is hardwired with them. They are called coaxial cables and they are how Mocha adapters work. So essentially all you do, I have mine hanging right here. It's right next to actually my old PS4 and since it's on the TV stand, it's actually right next to where the other coax would be. But if you look, there's only three things connected to it. So one is that black power cord. All that goes into is literally like a wall socket. So you see that? That is what powers the Mocha adapter and obviously it comes with it. Then right here, the yellow yellow cable, that's an ethernet, and obviously the ethernet is gonna go into your PC. In my case though, for this room, just because it has really bad Wi-Fi, I installed what's called an access point for my parents because they're boomers, their Wi-Fi was not good in here. But just pretend this is my PC. The Mocha adapter gives it ethernet so you would be on your full speeds. And then obviously the most important part, this weird cable, that is the coax, that is how it gets the full speed and why it's so much better than power line adapters. The only, I guess, one or two annoying things is that yes, you will need a coax in your room already. Like I said, most houses have that because coaxes are pretty old technology. If you have internet in your house, you definitely have a coax. And then on top
top of that, mocha adapters are a little more expensive. I think this one was 70 bucks, but all you need is one. You simply take the coax, you plug it into the mocha adapter like we saw, put the ethernet into the mocha adapter, and then into your PC, and boom, you will have speeds just as fast as ethernet. Way better than power line adapters, and obviously way better than Wi-Fi. And you can thank me for it. But wait a minute, Jarian. What if I want to watch TV and have the other coax into my mocha adapter? That's a great question, little Timmy. So if that's the case for you guys, which like out of the wall, I don't know, it's a little dark, but if you only have one of these coax cables and like you want one to go into your TV, oh, there I am, hello, and you obviously want one to go into your mocha adapter and into your PC, you can do both. All you need, which I do have, but I can't show because like it's way too dark behind my TV, is you need a coax splitter. All a coax splitter does is it turns one coax into two, so you will need to buy two extra ones. But you take the coax that's already in your room, the one that like your electrician installed, you put that into the coax splitter, you put two different coaxes into that, and then you could put one coax into the TV, one coaxial cable into the actual mocha adapter. It's really very simple, boys, and it is the best alternative outside of ethernet. Like, power line adapters are good, but mocha adapters and obviously ethernet is way, way better. They are designed to transmit data. Electricity is not, but still, all of them are better than Wi-Fi. So yeah, that is the mocha adapter. Hopefully guys, that part helped you actually get on a wired connection. As I said, playing on Ethernet, aka a wired connection, is insanely important. It's also important just for this video because I'm going to show you guys how to optimize your Ethernet settings. But let me know down below any other questions you guys have. We're going to move on, and what we're going to do is what I kind of just said. We're going to get into all the wired connection settings. So in order for us to actually optimize our Ethernet settings, we're going to have to go down over to the window Cortana search, and I'm going to type in device manager. As you can see, we're on my gaming PC, which I have not optimized yet, at least for, you know, my connection and ethernet. So this is actually going to be pretty damn useful. Let me bring this over. And where we're going to go is to the network adapters, this little icon right here, there's a drop down, and we're going to look for whichever says the ethernet. So as you can see, mine is from Intel, Intel ethernet controller i226. I think that's the same one I had before on my other PC. Regardless, all we're going to do right now is just take note of which ethernet we actually have, the brand of it, not like the number it is, just the brand, because with that brand, we're going to be able to go into all these advanced settings, which a lot of you might not have if you have not updated your drivers. So that's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. I can't lie, you guys can just type in, oh, I can't spell. You could just type in whichever brand you have, Ethernet drivers, and you can see, you actually cannot see, but if I hide my face, you can see the first search, Intel network adapter driver for Windows 10. I assume there's one for Windows 11, which you can probably look up. But because I am a nice guy, I will have all the links for these down below. This one we're gonna look at is Intel, but I'll also look at Killer. The other big brand is Realtek, which I used to have, and I'll walk you through all of them. They're all pretty much like a similar process. We're just downloading network drivers for our ethernet. It's almost like downloading drivers for your GPU. We've done it so many times in the past. And so even though, wait, you can see it. Look, version 27.8, that is the latest. I think the last one, what, it was probably like 25. I did it a year ago. This one's from about a month and a half ago. We're simply gonna download it to, we're gonna go for the X64 because most of you should be on a 64-bit system. We'll just do the normal wire not the pro. We'll accept this. Boom. It downloads that fast. We'll then minimize. Oh, never mind. We'll open this, then minimize. From here, I actually just realized this is a zip file, so we're gonna have to extract it. What we can do is we could either press extract all, or I think if I just click on the driver, yeah, it's gonna make me extract it anyways. Let me extract it onto the desktop, so we'll select that, extract there, and it should come up on the left. Yep, there we go. We have all the licenses and just random crap, which we can delete because the main thing we want is this driver application. I'm gonna click on it. It's gonna run. Uh, I'm gonna click on it. <laughs> there we go. And it's gonna run. Installer update Intel network connections. Yes, that is what we want. Only if you have Intel, remember. Don't do this if you have killer or real tech. I'm gonna show that after. It says the drivers were successfully installed, so we're good to go. That's gonna let us go back and have all those different setting options, but I can't show it yet because 
because I want to show for killer and for real tech. You know, that's what I do. So again, we're going to search up Intel killer Ethernet drivers because killer was acquired by Intel. I got to remember to hide my face, but look, it's right there. Intel killer performance suite. I will have the link. We're going to do the same exact thing, boys. Look, the version. This one is actually newer. It's from January 5th, 2023, but there's only one. Wait, only one available download, so it's much easier. We'll download that, accept it. This one's just a .exe. It's really, really easy. And you know what? I'll run it, even though... Let's see what it says. I do not have killer ethernet. Uh, yeah. No compatible hardware was detected. Yeah, we're gonna have to uninstall. <laughs> but that is how you do the Intel killer if you have a killer ethernet driver or killer ethernet cord and you need the new ethernet drivers for killer. So finally, Realtek, all I did was search up Realtek ethernet driver. This page again will be down in the description. I could say it 30 times. This was actually a little weirder because like, look at the page. There's just, bruh. I don't know why they put all this random shit. But what we're looking for here is under the little Windows thing, when you scroll down, it says Windows. You're gonna go to the Windows 10 or Windows 11 auto installation program, whichever Windows you are on, click that. I am on Windows 10. It says download file, click that. I feel like I don't need to actually explain this, but I'm gonna anyways. Let's hope I can pass the CAPTCHA. Oh, oh my God. You couldn't even see what I did. <laughs> Guys, it said three plus two and I typed in three plus two. Like I just copied it. I didn't answer the question. Oh my God. I am literally a robot. But anyways, same process. Open the file, the folder. It's a .zip, so extract it onto your desktop. As you can see at the top, that is the Realtek one. It's right above the Intel one that we saw before. I'm gonna click it. We'll install it, even though it should know that I don't have a Realtek Ethernet. Uh, oh, bro? Uh, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> The Realtek network controller was not found. Yeah, so. I mean, I guess if you guys really wanna, if you're bored, you can just install all the drivers to find whichever one you have. And obviously, it's only gonna work if you have the actual ethernet. But let me delete these because we don't need them anymore. That is how you update your ethernet drivers. And that is also how we can now go and optimize our settings. So again, ladies and gents, go down to device manager, search that up, bring this over, network adapters, same process, go to your actual ethernet, right click, go to properties from here, boom. Firstly, which is important, go to power management, and then you can even see, look, this has not been optimized, I have not touched this. Make sure you click allow the computer to turn off this device to save power. Uncheck that, it is insanely important that you uncheck it, insanely. And also because, I don't know why this was checked, Uncheck allow this device to wake the computer. Just uncheck all of them. For some reason, you can't uncheck these when this is unchecked, but none of them should be checked, so that's good. We're gonna go now to the other tab on the top, which says advanced. Click that and look, these are all the settings which we, or at least I was talking about. They're the ones we wanna change and optimize. And to start the optimizing, if you see energy efficient ethernet or green ethernet, this is the most important one. Make sure you click off. We do not want anything energy efficient efficient, which sounds bad, but the reason for it is that anything energy efficient, it's gonna cheap out on giving you the fastest possible connection. We want the best ping, so unfortunately, you know, we're not gonna be energy efficient. And then after that, if you have an enable PME setting, turn this off or disable it. Anything kind of wake related, you can also turn off, so wake from SOX on magic packet, disable. Wake on link settings, you can disable. Wake on magic packet, disable. One that's not really on or off, but it is important is where is it speed and duplex guys make sure this is on auto negotiation do not limit your speed at anything because a lot of people they'll pick a value that's just not good and then they won't get their full internet speed so leave it on auto negotiation or change it to that so you get the fastest speeds possible you don't want to throttle yourself and then finally which you can try out but you know if your ping is worse or it just doesn't feel as good you could always go back and change it flow control i have an auto negotiation but try out disabled it may sound counterintuitive, but it works and you know see if your pain gets better and worse better or worse, bro 
what am I saying? But yes, ladies and gents, those are the advanced Ethernet settings that we just updated and changed and optimized. I'm trying to flex my internet, which hopefully doesn't show my IP. <laughs> Usually my download's actually lower. I low-key think I just made my internet better, and I'm not even kidding. I, yeah, four ping. I wish, I truly wish that would be my ping in Fortnite, but starting next season, boys, it's over. Texas servers, it's over. All in all though, guys, that is how to improve your ping in Fortnite Chapter 4. The servers are moving, all of our pings are gonna be increasing, but hey, if you watch this video all the way through, I don't know why I just did that on the screen, you should be able to get better ping, and maybe, just maybe, you can end up here, boys, even when the servers move to Texas, and when all of us just are on 60 ping, bro! <laughs> like the video and subscribe.